What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Altcoin Buzz. So, on a day like this, where we've got uh, the market, you know, kind of moving sideways, we got the Mt. Gox BS, we've got the Bitcoin bloodbath, cryptocurrency market kind of suffering from this. Uh, currently, Bitcoin sitting at nine thousand two thirty, and we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, it, it is it is showing signs of a slight recovery, but we'll see how sustainable it is. So, on a day like this, we're going to make a video talking about fintech financial technology and the evolution of precious metals into paper money and into what we have today, virtual currencies through the adoption of credit cards that kind of ushered in this era of blockchain technology. So let's kick it right off. But before we do, I'd like to let you know, you can keep up with our podcast channel here on the right hand side where it says featured channels. You just click right here. You can subscribe there. And also altcoin buzz ladies, you subscribe right here both uh, growing communities. Uh, it's not just Jeff over there. It's a whole bunch of different people uh, doing a great job for us and putting out news and growing every single day with you all. So all coin buzz podcast, all coin buzz ladies, let's kick this right off. FinTech. So what is FinTech? FinTech is a <laughs> Porto Monto of financial technology that describes an emerging financial services sector in the 21st century. Originally, the term applied to technology applied to the back end of established consumer and trade financial institutions. Since the end of the first decade of the 21st century, the term has expanded to include any technological innovation in the financial sector, including innovations in financial literacy and education, retail banking, investment, and even cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. So if you hear the term fintech, that means financial technology. You can check this out on Investopedia if you want to know more. I recommend this resource for discovering more about the term fintech. You'll hear that a lot, especially as you start to invest more and more into uh, cryptocurrency and other virtual currencies. So where does the first paper money come from, right? So this is on time.com. Top 10 things you didn't know about money. The first paper money. So paper bills were first used by the Chinese who started carrying folding money during the Tang Dynasty, AD 618 through 907, mostly in the form of privately, privately issued bills or credit or exchange notes, also known as promissory notes, right? And used it, it for more than 500 years before the practice began to catch on in Europe in the 17th century. So the Chinese were the first ones to start using paper money long before the Europeans, the West, were ever using it in the 17th century. While it took another country or two for paper money to spread to the rest of the world, China was already going through a fairly advanced financial crisis. The production of paper notes had grown until their value plummeted. So that's when paper money was first introduced. And you'll see coin, you've, you've seen collectors uh, collect coins from hundreds of years ago, right? You've got gold coins from the Spanish Armada that you can still find in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Here's something that I'd like to talk about. The gold rush of 1849. For all you San Francisco 49er fans, you might already know this. But for those of you who don't know why the San Francisco 49ers are called the 49ers, well, here's your reason. The 1849 gold rush. The discovery of gold nuggets in the Sacramento Valley in early 1848 sparked the gold rush, arguably one of the most significant events to shape American history during the first half of the 19th century. As news spread, of the discovery, thousands of prospective gold miners traveled by sea or land over land to San Francisco and the surrounding areas. By the end of 1849, the non-native population of the California Territory was some 100,000 compared with the pre-1848 figure of less than 1,000. A total of $2 billion worth of precious metal was extracted from the area during the gold rush, which peaked in 1852. And that's that Story that I've told about Sutter's Mill, the discovery of Sutter's Mill on January 24th, 1848, James Wilson Marshall, a carpenter originally from New Jersey, found flakes of gold in the American River at the base of the Sierra Nevada Mountains near Coloma, California. At the time, Marshall was working to build a water-powered sawmill owned by John Sutter, a German-born Swiss citizen and founder of a colony of Nueva Helvetia, New Switzerland. So if you want to know more about this, you can catch up with it on history.com. And as we move forward here, we'll talk about the Federal Reserve System in the United States. You guys are familiar with the term central banking. So let's kick this off here on Wikipedia. 
The Federal Reserve System is the central banking system of the United States. It was created on December 23, 1913 with the enactment of the Federal Reserve Act. After a series of financial panics, particularly the Panic of 1907, led to the desire for central control of the monetary system in order to alleviate financial crisis. Over the years, such events such as the Great Depression in the 1930s and the Great Recession during the 2000s have led to the expansion of roles and responsibilities of the Federal Reserve. You'll hear terms like quantitative easing and various different inflation and terms related to economics, depending on whether you want to look at it from a microeconomics or macroeconomics perspective, it's all monetary policy and it's run by the Federal Reserve in the United States. So the next evolution that you have here is credit cards, right? So credit card, small plastic card containing a means of identification such as signature or picture. The authorities authorizes the person named on it to charge goods or services to an account for which the cardholder is billed periodically. So debit cards, credit cards, you know about these, you know about that technology because many of you use it right now. The use of credit cards originated in the United States during the 1920s when individual firms such as oil companies and hotel chains began issuing them to customers for purchases made at company outlets. The first universal credit card, which could be used at a variety of establishments, was introduced by the Diners Club in 1950, another major card of this type known as a travel and entertainment card was established by the American Express Company in 1858 under the system the card the credit card company charges its cardholders an annual fee and bills them on periodic basis usually monthly all right so you can see how the technology of currency has always gone right there's always this advancement in fintech and as we advance and continue to advance, you can see how there's an advancement now into, there's also an advancement of markets, which we can also make a video about that, where you have precious metals and you have um, stock markets. And now we have this potentially developing market with cryptocurrency and virtual currencies where you have coins and tokens that are exchanged, right? So we can also delve into the, the history of markets, but this is a history of currencies and you can see how we are due now for this virtual currency renaissance, uh, as we like to call it, to, to come about. So now we'll take a look at the blockchain technology, the fintech of blockchain, right? A blockchain is a digitized, decentralized public ledger of all cryptocurrency transactions, constantly growing as a completed blocks. The most recent transactions are recorded and added to in Added to it in a chronological order, it allows market participants to keep track of digital currency transactions without central record keeping. Each node, a computer connected to the network, gets a copy of the blockchain, which is downloaded automatically. Originally developed as the accounting method for a virtual currency Bitcoin, blockchains which use what's known as distributed ledger technology, so DLT is distributed ledger technology if you ever hear that, are appearing in a variety of commercial applications today. Currently, the technology is primarily used to verify transactions within digital currencies through, though it is possible to digitize code and insert practically any document into the blockchain. So this is how you have blockchains now being used for tokens. Doing so creates an indelible record that can cannot be changed. Furthermore, the record's authenticity can be verified by the entire community using the blockchain set of a single centralized authority. Blockchain itself basically is encryption, or it uses encryption, which is where the term crypto comes from. So encrypted is uh, short, or crypto is short for encrypted. And if we just look at the market as a whole, you can see how this market has come together using the technology of blockchain. So the blockchain is the currency developed by the original Bitcoin Satoshi white paper in 2009, which basically it is important probably if you're going to get into Bitcoin that you at least explore the Satoshi uh, white paper and understand more about that and how the peer to peer transactions came to be. So you have all this on here. You have the developers, business individuals, fraud protection, participate innovation. And yeah, if we just go through this, I would like to see on, this, on the website where it has the white paper, but it appears 
as though it's not readily made available here. For whatever reason, I'm not seeing it on the website, and I could have overlooked it. Uh, this is kind of odd. I would have thought that I could access the, the white paper through the website, Bitcoin.org. Hmm. Anyways, nonetheless, uh, it, it is interesting to, to understand how Bitcoin innovated the fintech for this market that exists using tokens and coins. If you don't know what the difference between a coin and a token is, basically a coin is to function strictly as a currency. And some of these coins actually are decentralized application developer platforms like iOS or Android. And you can build, uh, pro projects are built using that blockchain source code and they're called tokens. And here's a list of all the tokens, right? Most of them are built on Ethereum, you can see. So with Cardano being a decentralized application developer platform list, you'll start to see more and more of these. Neo, actually Neo is probably number two right now as far as application developers with tokens. Omni, you see a little bit of Omni on there, but I would say it's probably Neo at this point. Qtum's kind of making a, a rise here. There's another Neo waves. Um, so this is just really interesting to keep an eye on with the development of fintech in cryptocurrencies it's all the way back in time to back before we had even if you look at prehistoric times you know there was times where currency was exchanged in shells or um, stuff like that and there, the history does go beyond paper money and coins from the chinese i mean there was always a trade and barter system in pretty much every culture that we've seen uh in, in some places like hawaii the, the polynesian islands there was more of a community share that was run from the top with the elite and you know they had that uh, tiered society where people knew their role in the society some people were farmers some people were fishers fishermen others were elite which were chief chiefs and you see that in native american culture and all that so let me know if you guys like videos like this we can keep doing them uh, this is jeff with altcoin buzz you can subscribe to this channel you can also click that bell to get notified when videos like this drop and don't forget, you can keep up with All Coin Buzz podcast. Today, we're going to be interviewing, I believe there's going to be a Titanium interview with Michael Stolaire on there. And also, the All Coin Buzz ladies channel is growing. You can see right here. Uh, you can just keep up with them. Sarah, Candice, Renee, um, Haley, and you have Brooke, and Corey. There's Corey. So anyways, guys, we'll see you all next time.